Download Marshall, scan the QR code on the top of the drive. This should take you to your phone's app store, where you can download the Marshall app. Once you've downloaded, open the app, and then you can continue as a guest, or you can log in so that you have access to the user guides and drives you've registered for a warranty with. On the Marshall homepage, at the top right, you have your account information and app settings such as appearance, language, you can select your units, and there's other app information in this area as well. To create a new project, press connect and scan the NFC tag with your mobile device. This will take you to the Drive Dashboard. Clicking the top of the Drive Dashboard will open the project options. The first part of this is the sync status, which will tell you if any parameter changes have been made in the Marshall app that have not yet been written to the drive. Marshall is not a live connection, so any changes made in the app will need to be written to the drive to take effect. The next option is the drive security. Here you can set a pin to prevent unauthorized access to the drive parameters. This will work for both other users' Marshall apps and accessing parameters through the drive keypad. Below this, you have the serial number check, which will prevent you from writing to unintended drives. We then have the drive warranty. To register for the warranty, tap extended warranty at the bottom. Enter your serial number details if they're not already configured. Purchase date, your drive supplier. your industry, and then the application. Below warranty, you have the option to change the drive name. And then access to drive properties as well. This will tell you the name, type of device, and the model number, drive ratings, whether there is a PIN code set and other details about the drive such as the firmware, serial number and runtime. At the top of the dashboard if you have the drive powered on it will display the health of the drive and the state. Last start is the commissioning wizard. This will take you through the four key steps to get your motor and application up and running. The first step is for your motor where you enter your motor rating details you then can do a spin test. You've got to prepare the spin test by downloading the test configuration to the drive and then you hold the up and down keys to run at a jog frequency to check the motor turns in the correct direction. All the information on completing the test is displayed on the phone screen. Once complete, you then set up the control of the drive. By default, you would use your local remote, run forward, run reverse, and hardware enable. You have the option to view a wiring guide. You can then set your acceleration and deceleration rates and the maximum and minimum motor speeds. Once finished, you have again the option to view a wiring guide. And then you can either write that project to the drive or you can just return to the drive dashboard. Below Fast Start you have the setup tools, starting with motor, 
this is just access to your motor details and you have the option to reverse the motor direction if you wish. Then have the I.O. tool, this will give you access to the terminal functions as well as the parameters for scaling the analog inputs or configuring the type of analog input whether it be a current, a voltage or a particular voltage mode such as 4 to 20 milliamp error where the drive will trip to an error state if the input falls below 4 milliamps. You also have the destination mappings function which will tell you where the analog input might be being used. You can select your analog output function and the output scaling. then have access to the digital inputs where you can edit the run stop configuration. This will quickly configure your digital inputs and you have a helpful wiring guide at the top of the screen to see the changes you are making. You can select negative logic. This will again update the wiring guide. You then have access to the digital inputs. For digital input 1 and digital input 5 you can select the type, whether digital input 1 will be an output or digital input 5 be a frequency input. You can also select the functions of these terminals and the app will prompt you if there is a clash where two inputs have been set to the same function. Similarly to the analog input, if you've selected digital input 5 to be a frequency input, the app will tell you where this input is being used. You then have the speed setup tool, this will show you your four reference configurations. In local remote setting, you only use two references. If you select a voltage preset mode, you use all four references. If you want to tweak a configuration, you can set the specific value of either one of the four references, and the speed setup tool gives you access to change related values to your reference, such as the preset frequencies. You can change the drive frequency limits, as well as the ramp, and your PID reference feedback speed forward and enable selector. We then have the PID tool. There's a complete video that talks you through this again, but just to go over it, there's a PID reference selector, a PID fixed reference set point if you've selected this. You can select your PID feedback. Your feed forward. You can enter your proportional and integral gains, your PID enable. Whether you want to enable the PID using a digital input, and it'll also tell you what functions the inputs are currently set to. You can then set which reference you want the PID output to be mapped to. The advanced motor control tool gives you options to select the control mode, whether this be linear V2F, square V2F, or resistance compensation. Based on your options, you have a choice to enter motor boost. You can select the stopping mode here. You can also set additional settings such as catch an already spinning motor, setting your PWM frequency. If you've selected an option such as resistance compensation that requires an auto tune, the app will prompt you to do this. Prepare the drive, 
and then start the test by holding the up and down keys. Once you've done the test, select get results. This will give you the reading of the measured state of resistance and apply this to your project. Another setup tool is the wiring guide. This will automatically update based on the settings of your digital inputs, your analog inputs, and your relay functions to show you easily how they should be wired. Another setup tool is your parameter list. This gives you access to all parameters and you can favour certain parameters that you come into contact with often. You've also grouped parameters by functions. Now let's look at the diagnostic tools. The first tool is your drive status. This will tell you outputs that are currently happening in the drive. If we run the drive and refresh the parameter, See all values in this drive status tool are populated. We can also read the IO status tool in the same way. This will tell you which inputs are active. We can also read the analog input values. Another tool is the differences from defaults. These are parameters that have been changed from the factory default settings. Another tool is your error log, which will give you a list of your recent errors. You can clear the error log from this tool. And if you have an error, reset the drive. I induce an error by lowering the analog input. I can read the drive and the drive state at the top will show me that I'm in an error state. This window gives you the reason for the error and it will also capture parameters that have been set. Another diagnostics tool gives you access to the Commander S100 user guides and step-by-step -step guide, as well as troubleshoots and information such as why the motor might be spinning the wrong way, and it gives you access to the parameters to help you with amending. Certain parameters give you option of a single write to drive, this will only write parameter you are currently accessing to the drive, so it will not affect the sync status. In your menu options you can generate a PDF and open it using your preferred tool. This will give you a list of all drive parameters and highlight those that have been changed from the default values. You then have the option to save a project as well. Or share the project. You can then quickly access drive properties, read to the drive, write all parameters to the drive, default the drive and reset the drive.